This is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. Today we will talk about a very important topic. It's more like a, yeah, a psychological one. So if you think that you are unlucky at the poker tables all the time, then to be honest, to make the conclusion at the beginning already, you probably should not play poker at all. Because the truth is, if you play enough hands, if you have a huge sample, luck and bad luck should even out and in the end you should have a result that only reflects your skill. And if you feel like being unlucky all the time and your results also being bad, you are probably just not a good player. That's just the sad truth. Or you didn't play enough hands. I mean, it can sometimes feel this way. You can run very bad over a long period of time. But if you um, bring in enough volume and play enough hands, you should in the end always see good results and make money. And if not, you're just not a good poker player. But yeah, that's my take on it. Let's see what Phil Garpon has to say about this topic. Maybe he has some other important insights as well. So... Let's start. Oops, no sound. Are negative. I believe studies show that 80% of our thoughts are negative. I believe that that's going to vary from person to person. And I believe that people who express more negativity externally and internally are going to have more trouble at the poker table. So I'm going to talk you through why I believe that is and what you can do about it. In 2011, I moved to Vancouver, Canada to continue. It always helps to play tons of tables because then you will not see the results most of the time because you're just clicking and then you go to the next table and don't even watch what's happening uh, that could could help you a bit because then you will only recognize half the wins or half the, the losses and if you majorly lost then you will not yeah, even recognize how bad it is but yeah just try to make the best decision at all times, given the information you have at this point. And if you do that, and if you are a good decision maker, this should pay out in the end. You can run lucky for long streaks, call it a downswing as well, but at some point, fortune will come back and you will make even more. Continue playing online poker when they shut it down. It was the first time I'd ever lived with a poker playing friend, you know, an extended period of time. I'd spent some summers with groups of friends, but this is the first time I've been in the same house or apartment. We had no office in our apartment, so we both set up our computers on opposite ends of a very big kitchen table, and that's where we played from. And both of us were generally mild-mannered, non-expressive people. If you had a camera right here while I was playing, if I wasn't streaming or something else, you wouldn't see much of a reaction from me when, when anything happens. And, and he was kind of the same way. But all of a sudden, because there was another person in the room, we kind of slowly developed a habit of complaining about bad beats. So I think uh, many people do it. And this even makes you more mad and will uh, hurt your game if you complain a lot. Just don't think about it twice. Move on to the next hand and what is the past remains in the past. No reason to waste any mental energy on that anymore. There's also uh, something like uh, selective memory. So if you win, this is just a normal course of action in your mind because you are a great guy and you are supposed to win. But if you lose and especially if you also get very unlucky, this will remain in memory way longer. So it's only natural that you will rem remember the bad things way longer and don't forget them that easy when the good things will happen to you. So that's sort of normal and that's why it often also feels like you are getting unlucky all the time. Although in reality, this is probably not the case. He would lose a pot and be like, ah, oh, man, that was sick. And I would do the same thing. And, and it actually kind of escalated over time where it just became normal for us to, I mean, essentially whine about losing pots. What I realized after a little while of that is that I was actually getting tilted a lot more easily and somehow expressing the emotion or complaining 
about being unlucky was impacting me in some way. And so I, I did a lot of thinking about, you know, why that was. So yeah, that's what I said. You should not get into your negative emotions too much because this will affect you and will affect your game and it will hurt you in the end. So don't get in the habit of whining. Another friend that I'd spent summers with in Las Vegas, he would lose a pot online. He would get mad. He would throw his mouse at the wall, shatter. He would try to put it back together. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, if he plays more than one table, he will not be able to make <laughs> any more decisions unless it's a laptop and he has a touchpad as well. <laughs> so that is very stupid. I mean, if you smash something, at least take something, but you can still continue to play or at least make your decisions before you quit. But like usually, like usually he could put it back together. The batteries had flown out and he, he could put it back together, but sometimes he broke the mouse and then he was fine. He would throw it and then he was fine. There are some people who, when they have anger or something resembling anger, they get it out and it kind of releases it and they feel better. I know someone else who once broke the arm or no, not the arm, a finger <laughs> because he got so mad. He smashed on the table and yeah, somehow the table was stronger than his his hand and he broke a finger. <laughs> so yeah, little uh, funny anecdote. First of all, I'm not that kind of person. But second of all, what we were doing was not so much releasing anger. It was more just complaining. I believe that what all the complaining was doing was making me remember the unlucky events more readily. So it started to feel like I was unluckier than I was. When you feel like you're unlucky, when you've been on a long yeah, I was talking about this already, selective memory, the bad things remain longer in your memory. I think this is also an evolutionary thing, because yeah, bad things, you don't want them to happen again. And that's why you, your brain wants you to avoid this in the future. And that's why it's, uh, yeah, remembered way better. Extended uh, bad run, you can start to get knocked off your game more easily because you're a little more emotionally unstable. You have this story that you're telling yourself that, that- Hi, Lost Paradise, greetings. That you're unlucky. Then you tell yourself, no, no, that's not a real thing. You know, everybody's luck going, going forward is gonna be even and I'm gonna run normal from here on out. And so you're doing okay for a while, you're mentally okay, and then you lose again. And you're like, uh, you fall back into that mindset of, no, I'm unlucky and this is, this is really upsetting. In college, I was taught about something called the shampoo effect. You know, when you, when you wash your hair with shampoo, you use, whatever amount of shampoo, you lather, you rinse. And if you use, if you want to shampoo again, only a small amount of shampoo will get you as much lather. They use that to, uh, to refer to drinking. If you went out one night drinking and you want to drink the next morning, you get drunk pretty quickly off of a, a couple of drinks. And I think the same thing is true of tilt. It becomes easier for a couple of bad beats to tilt you in a way that it, it used to take a dozen bad beats to do. So when I realized that I, stop complaining as much and he I think it's also the case that you getting on tilt way quicker when the sessions before were bad already then it takes less bad beats to trigger you so be very careful when on a downswing and yeah quit sessions early when it's going continue it continuously going bad because this could also affect your game then it's not only the bad luck that causes losses, but also the diminished um, quality of your playing. He happened to stop complaining as much too. And I, I, I do think it genuinely helped. So there's something called a, a negativity bias. And the way this works, this is not exclusive to poker by any means, it's, it's everywhere. If you've ever had to pick a line at the grocery store, you go into the one that seems the shortest, and then the one next to you that had like one extra person in it is just moving much faster and it goes, goes right past you. That kind of sticks in your mind and you start to think, ah, this always happens to me. Whereas if you get in the shortest line and then it goes the fastest, you don't think anything of it. That's just what was supposed to happen. Yes, true. This is what, yeah, I explained in different words already, more or less. Same thing happens in traffic. As soon as I move to this lane, that one's gonna start moving and this one's gonna stop because those events stick out in your memory more than what is supposed to happen. Honestly, in traffic, I'm often I'm very good in picking the best lane. Usually, I pick the fastest, fastest one. But yeah, not not always. But I'm I'm a good lane picker. I would say like eighty percent of the time I'm in the best lane. I'm also switching lanes constantly if I <laughs> see mine that's not going fast enough. 
of you move to this lane because it's moving and it keeps moving. That happens everywhere. It can be really detrimental to your mental, emotional well-being. We've all had friends who will say something like, you know, well, with my luck. I think um, the things he's explaining is, is the thing that you should not do at all. You should train to um, play like a machine, like a robot, and don't let emotions um, yeah, affect you in any way. And what he is explaining is ex exactly the opposite. And you, if you are out at the poker table, you want to have no emotions or let emotions completely out of the picture. This is what's going to happen. Why do these things always happen to me? I'm so unlucky. Things like that. I don't know about your ex experience, but in my experience, those people tend to be people who seem less happy more often. Now, obviously, you could argue that if somebody's having bad thing after bad thing happen to them, they're supposed to be unhappy. A lot of times, it's, it's their view of how the world is treating them, in my opinion. Not only can... Yeah, the glass is half full or half empty, <laughs> like a German saying is, yeah, the, your view on, on the world obviously also affects how you see things. But I think I read sometime that it's not even, that you cannot influence it that much. I mean, a lot of your um, optimism or pessimism is already uh, coded in your genes and obviously you cannot influence that. But yeah, you can also, yeah, but environmental facts are also a, a thing and you can at least uh, to some degree push it in the right direction feeling like you're unlucky or being unlucky so many times tilt you more easily. It can also make you shy away from risks, both at the table while you're in a hand. Ah, I think this is a shove, but with my luck, I'm going to run into a big hand. I think this is a call, but the flop's going to be nasty for me. I just, uh, I'll just fold down. Yeah, I think that's like completely biased thinking and you should just Look at the range you think your opponent has or the range GTO suggests people should have. And then based on that, you should make your decision and not on some emotions like you feel like you will get unlucky. And that's why make a decision that's not the, the best one because you fear getting sucked out or whatever or running into a bad, good hand. And not have to deal with it or off the table in terms of playing in a game that you should because it's making you uncomfortable you think you won't run well although with that specific example don't play in a game if it's starting to make you feel uncomfortable usually because i think with this, with this is mindset you are not not the the one who sit be, should be sitting at the poker table <laughs> you'll play you'll play worse than you would otherwise it can impact your ev in one way or another it impacts your happiness level which you know, what's more important than that? How do we counteract? Yeah, in best case, the results on the poker table should not affect your other life at all. Should just, yeah, now that there are good days, there are bad days, and both happen, and also very frequently, and this should not affect you. Because, I mean, if you are already angry at the tables or ever not in a good state of mind, why it, it will become way easier to, to deal with these things if you will be happy doing whatever you do off the tables. And if it's affecting you off the tables as well, then yeah, it will take longer to recover from these downswings. I mean, it's easier said than done, but that should be the goal. I mean, you cannot always um, make sure that it will be this way, but at, at, as I said, this is the goal you try to achieve. Negativity bias. There are ways to not let it impact you as much. So one of the first is doing kind of the opposite of what my friend and I were doing. Rather than complain about the bad things that happen, celebrate when the good things happen. You know, I'm not one when I'm playing to do either very much naturally, but celebrating the good things happening make those more memorable. And celebration is a good feeling. It makes you I think you should do neither of these, <laughs> to be honest. But celebrating might also put you... You should be in a neutral state of mind at best, I think, if you play. You should not be too euphoric or or like celebrating. And this will also make you maybe too optimistic, call too much, making wanting to be the hero because you are unbeatable. And yeah, I think uh, you should do none of these. 
to feel good. I had a but this is to balance it out. If you like tilt three times and then celebrate three times, maybe this brings you back in a neutral state. A, I had a friend who taught me a con he was trying to help me, he taught me a concept and I just couldn't really execute it because of my personality. But basically what he does is he sets, I, I feel like it was every three hours, what he calls a joy alarm. And so his joy alarm goes off and he sits there and he asks himself some questions, you know, I wish I remember all the questions he asked, but something along the lines of, you know, am I financially secure? Do I have people who love me? And he, he goes through the list and then, and usually there are things that he does have. And then he essentially celebrates as if, you know, you're in a bar and your team just won. And I, I couldn't get comfortable with, <laughs> with that. So I didn't incorporate it into my life. I tried a couple of times. It just, it was, I'm glad there wasn't a camera on when I was. He should uh, make a video about this and with an <laughs> exact, uh, with the exact questions and how exactly to do it. I mean, this actually might help some people. It's like some sort of positive meditation or something. I mean, for me, it's also not necessary, but do everything you can that helps you to deal with bad things. And if it is that, and do it. I mean, do the things that work out for you and yeah, pass on the f things that don't or try them. And if they don't help, don't continue doing it like he did with this advice. But the concept stuck with me and I still try to, in my own way, in my own less expressive way, celebrate when good things happen to me. Another one is to express gratitude. It's along the same lines, really. You can give thanks in, in a written form or a verbal form to yourself or, you know, if you pray to God or to the people and things that you're grateful. Not sure if the people who believe in God, who are like heavy church goers and stuff, are allowed to play poker. Because, yeah, I think gambling is a sin. And taking money from other people also in a predatory way, because you are basically... Yeah, trying to exploit the fish mainly and not the other eggs might be something that's against what is written in the Bible, but that's a different thing. I don't know all the scientific reasons why that, that's so helpful, but if you're expressing gratitude for things and you're celebrating wins, you're going to remember all of the good things that are happening to you more than you would have otherwise. And another one is, is to do the opposite of of what that friend I mentioned earlier does. So this is one that I do. I call myself a lucky person. So let's say that I'm gonna buy a piece of somebody who's playing in a big tournament. I'll buy 10% of their action. And I'll say, don't worry, my money's lucky. And I don't actually believe that me in investing in them is gonna make them more lucky. I like to say it both for myself and, um, why do I like to do that? I mean, objectively, I'm a lucky person. I was born in America to a loving family. Yeah, I mean, objectively, everyone born in industrialized, wealthy countries is very lucky. I mean, you could have been born in, the, in another part of the globe. And even, I mean, it sounds very racist and bad, but you have a lot of advantages if you are white and you will have a lot of prejudice and other stuff against you if you have another skin color so if you are white you have the best chances in life this is because yeah the system is set up this way i don't say that a black person is um, better than a white one um, I, i'm just saying that blacks are the ones that are getting treated differently and also other races so if you are looking like me or like Phil Garfon, this is an advantage in itself. Because yeah, the, the system is rigged and is set up in, in, in a way. But, yeah, I mean, this has nothing to do with poker, but it's a sad truth. Uh, who are financially secure, who took great care of me. I've had great friends. I, I've had a great career. I have a great family now. I'm objectively a lucky person. Yeah, also being born in a middle class family or even an upper class is also a great advantage. Because if you are born in a poor family, you will probably not have the same chances to get educated or even start with poker because you are, <laughs> yeah, you are 
doing other things you're trying to survive you're trying desperately trying to make any money and there's not that much time you could spend on your education just another example so being born in a rich or wealthy family is also an advantage in itself that you cannot influence at all and i know that i'm lucky and i appreciate all of that but that doesn't mean that i'm going to be lucky in the future yet i still like to say that i think i will be and i think it just helps with mindset it, it can kind of drag you down if somebody around you is always complaining or always not believing in themselves and not believe it's also not just luck i mean a, a lot more in life is luck than most people are yeah i mean most people think all they have achieved is because of skill but that's not true i think a large part is luck as well. I mean, it's hard to quantify how much it is, but I think it's at least 50%, maybe way more, but it's, it's hard to say. It also depends on the area and stuff. And by the way, thank you for the follow. So let's continue with Phil Garfond. Even good things are gonna happen to them. I think it makes me a more pleasant person to be around. To sum up, if you're the type of person that expresses anger and it helps you get it out, Go for it by all means, but make sure you're celebrating wins as well. And I think someone who expresses anger very well, but does not is affected by it, is Jungleman Cates. I think I sometimes uh, I ask him about it, Daniel Cates. You get so angry. Are, are you tilted and uh, making bad decisions? Then he was like, "No, I'm I'm very mad at the point, but it's not influencing me mentally at all." But I think it's only working for him because he has, how is it called? It's like he's on the spectrum. He's not, he's like a mild form of autism. So it's easier for him to not get affected than for normal people. If you're not that kind of person, or if you are, there's a different Asperger disease, I think it's called. difference between in the moment letting out your anger and two hours later complaining to your friend about how i never met a jungle man in person but i have his contact in a messenger so i talk to him sometimes there unlucky you are try to minimize those behaviors they're bad for you they're they're not helping your friend certainly and yeah celebrate your wins express gratitude and uh i like to i you don't have to do this but it works for me i like i like to consider myself lucky by the way, if you're enjoying this and you want to see more, please let me know in the comments that you are, what you'd like to see. Consider liking and... It looks like we are already at the end. I also got a call, which I need to take. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. If that's the case, like, subscribe, share. If it's on YouTube and yeah, on Twitch, you can also follow. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, one more thing. You enjoyed this i also got a finance channel please check this out as well i have i'm way under subscribed <laughs> i personally feel personally feel like i'm undersubscribed so feel free to check that out as well finance with excel it's called yeah that's it for today good luck at the tables bye bye